Hey guys, welcome back to the Discipline Life Podcast, the place where we talk all about power differential relationships and domestic discipline. I'm Aria, and this is my husband, Coda. Hello, everyone. On today's podcast, we are going to kind of be branching off from our discussion last week on perfectionism and talk about the process of growth and change and how that process can be a slow one and typically is and how to remain vigilant in that process and how to remain patient through that process. So another hot topic. <laughs> and this is actually going to be our last real topic, like new topic of the of the year uh, for the rest of the year into maybe the first few podcasts of 2024. We are going to be revisiting some of our very first episodes and kind of talking about if our opinions on those subjects have stayed the same, if we need to amend anything and how we approach certain things now almost a year later so strike it from the record (laughs) (laughs) if you have any topics or old podcast episodes that you really want us to cover and really want to know if our opinions have changed or stayed the same let us know um you can just let us know the topic of of the podcast that you're referencing and i will go back and find that but yeah, I thought that that would be kind of a fun way to end the year and kind yeah, of... Yeah, kind of end the year. Mm-hmm. But today we are talking about change and being patient through change. And so this is branched off from our discussion on perfectionism because requiring fast change or thinking that changes need to happen very quickly without any type of bumps along the way, that is a perfectionism mindset. And so that's why we thought that it would flow from that conversation. So what are your takes on being patient through change? Well, change is a word that some people wish it was a four letter word. (laughs) Um, And one of the things I've always said is people love change to a point. Um, so there are some people that will say, oh, I don't mind change. Um, and then it's those same people that when change potentially goes too far, then it's, I don't want to change. Um, and so I think we all have trouble with that to a certain extent, um, that word change. Um, but patience is also another word that I think we also have a lot of trouble with. I know that, um, I can not be the most patient. Um, did you just laugh? Because that was that's true. It, it, she's. The, but um, I think it's just like everything when we were talking about perfectionism and change. Patience is goes along with those two. It is um, something you can improve on, and that takes a lot of energy and communication Um, and I'm trying not to use the word patient for patience but (laughs) that's exactly what that is Uh, and both of those but I I do think change and patience goes hand in hand yeah together I think that when we first started domestic discipline I mentioned in our last podcast that I had this idea of what that meant to me and what that looked like to me and what I envisioned our relationship looking like with domestic discipline in it. And when that didn't happen right away, it can be a little disheartening. It can be a little off-putting and it can feel like failure if you're not careful And so I think that when you are making some major life changes, which the implementation of domestic discipline into a pre-existing relationship, that is a major change in the dynamic of that relationship, right? Um, Even with us, we already had this kind of understood hierarchy of, you know, um, leadership and submission, but implementing a system of accountability and of discipline was a huge change. And 
change has to happen to an extent slowly at a pace where both people are comfortable and it's sustainable. And so it's important to keep in mind that just because those changes don't happen overnight doesn't mean that it's a failure or that it's not a change that's worth making or that you're not having any successes at all. That's very well said, by the way. Um, I don't know if I will be as articulate, although I will try to be. Change is something that has uh, growing pains, is what I would call it. And that's why change is uncomfortable to us, because a lot of change forces uh, is, is painful, and it forces us to grow, and it forces us to have to take a look at where we need growth. Um, what I find is interesting, though, one of my favorite quotes is um, that there's nothing wrong with change as long as it's in the right direction. That's from Winston Churchill. And he was absolutely right, because one of the things that I think can be harmful with change is if you're not thinking about, is this the right change to make? Is it going in the right direction? That change is not necessarily good. Think about some of the things that have maybe happened in your relationship as we're talking about this. And think about some changes maybe that you tried to implement early on or maybe are trying to implement now that are just not quite going well. Maybe that's not the right change. Maybe that's not going in the right direction. Um, And an obvious solution to that is, did you take the time to really discuss, communicate, think about, strategize whether or not this change was going to help you go in the right direction, in the direction that you want to go, that you wanted to go? Or did you just pull the trigger and say, this is the change we need to make, here we go? Because I think you'll find a lot of times maybe the change is going in the wrong direction or maybe the right direction, but you didn't strategize about how to get there um, before you just pulled the trigger on it. As the leader of our relationship, that not only are the decisions you make driving change, but the decisions you don't make also drive change. Ooh, that's very good. That's very good. And so if you are seeing a pattern of behavior and you don't correct it or you don't address it in some way that is also making the decision to allow that behavior to solidify into the relationship and that may or may not be a positive change into the relationship most of the time it's probably not now what can be the fears because change is painful and change does require growth and change does require risk sometimes that what we can what we find ourselves doing is in order to avoid that we decide not to make a change at all but as aria just said even not making a change at all actually is making a, a decision of change um there uh, my father once said whether you do nothing or you do something you are still choosing to do something um and i think that's the same thing with change if you're choosing not to change something you actually are uh deciding to make a change or if you do decide you know what, I think we need to make some changes here you are deciding to do something in in that direction so it is very very important to sit down and again strategize and to talk about what are our goals you keep those in mind what are what's the reason we got into domestic discipline in the first place how is this going to benefit our relationship as Aria said and how um Is this going to help us reach the goals that we have before you pull the trigger on something? Because, gosh, I can't tell you that we haven't done that a lot, but I will say we've done it enough to go, gosh, I don't know if that was the right way to approach it. There have been times where your apprehension to make a decision has led to problems. Problems. I would agree. Problems might be a little bit of a harsh word there, but I feel like there have been times, especially early on, where you were not 
I don't want to use the word afraid, but you were apprehensive about making certain changes, certain decisions. You maybe thought that you didn't necessarily have authority in certain aspects of our relationship. And because of that, your decision to allow certain behaviors to happen or go unchecked, that created some changes in our dynamic and in our relationship that later had to be fixed. And I'll tell you, the, the biggest change that you have to make is, is with yourself. Some of the things Aria just mentioned that I had to go and look into the mirror and realize, oh gosh, this is a change that I need to make for me in order for our relationship to change. That is very difficult to not only admit that you need to do that, but then second, strategize, how do I do that? If I was talking to us or talking to someone else who is first kind of starting down this path, is if it needs to be an explicit conversation, have that conversation to know or to establish where your authority within the relationship lies. Because if we would have just had a conversation about, you know, where, what my perspective of your authority in our relationship looked like, you would have known that you didn't need my explicit permission to hold me accountable in every aspect. Because in my opinion, and this is where we are now, you hold authority in our entire relationship. You are responsible for me as your wife and as the submissive partner. You are responsible for me and to me to hold me accountable in every aspect. Yep, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think you had that perspective when we first started. No, I can definitely tell you because there were times where I had frustrations that you could tell I was having frustrations and she just said, you realize you have the power in this situation. In other words, you did not have to get frustrated because you had the power to say, before I get frustrated, the answer is no, and you need to stop. Or, or, or you had the power, in other words, to take care of it before you got to the moment of frustration because we've talked about that. This is an area where you have the authority. And it was, it was interesting for me to go, oh, okay, light bulb moment. Yes, I have the authority to be able to do that. So that's something that's changed in our relationship, and it's changed over time. Now, we didn't have resources to necessarily look at and learn from, and so I hope that you guys listening can, if you're in the, those early stages, you can look at us and say, okay, we're, we're going to learn from their mistakes because we had to just walk that road and make those mistakes and figure our way through. And so hopefully you can say, okay, before we get there, we're going to have this conversation so that we're both on the same page to say, look, you know, as the head of household, my authority extends to every aspect of our relationship. Because if you would have just come to me and said, you know, this, these are the roles we're taking. So this is where my authority lies. And I would have had the opportunity to talk that out with you and see what you meant by that and I would have agreed because I was on the same page um we would have saved ourselves a lot of trouble along the way yes <laughs> and and I appreciate that you talked about um you know t learning from our mistakes that's one reason obviously we started the podcast was to try to share that um but this is also where I appreciate the Discord community and every everything else. And if you're listening and you're not a Patreon supporter, um, consider doing that because there is a lot going on now in our Discord, which I think is amazing, where people are trading uh, ideas back and forth um, so that you don't have to – we can share, hey, don't stumble as we did, the different couples trying to talk about uh, where they're learning and where they're changing. And I think that's good too. A link to it is down below if you want to get connected there, and it's only $5 a month, and you get access to some extra content as well as the Discord, and the Discord is just really uh, a good resource, and it's been a great like peer-to-peer -peer sharing. And the only reason I bring that up now, I know we normally do that plug at the end of the podcast, but the reason I bring that up now is I think that's part of 
a change that I know that I have gone through is realizing that relying on others to help in the process is not a weakness. Weakness. It's not a bad thing. The need for community is is yeah. there and having a community of people kind of walking the same path is a huge resource and one that hopefully we can all take more advantage okay, of. So the reason she's <laughs> saying that is because, yes, I have not been as active on the Discord as maybe I could be. But I, I'm extremely busy right now. But I'm going to get there. But I'm glad to see how active everybody has been. Yes. Yes. So um, So back to the topic, though. Um, the patience part is what I, I want to kind of segue in because we've talked a lot about the change aspect. But the patience part is what I think is key. I. It's so funny how when I think I'm a patient person, something happens in my life to prove to me that I'm not patient enough yet. But I am learning how to be more patient. Being patient with myself to make those changes slowly. It's that slow and steady that wins the race. I am not. I thought I was a slow and steady person. I am not. I want it you know, just like a lot of us. I want it now. And obviously, life doesn't work that way. Relationships don't work that way. It's the slow and steady that wins the race. And I would even go one step further. Slow and steady and the intentionality of what you're doing is what wins the, wins the race. Because you can be slow and steady, but if you don't know exactly what you're going for, what the intention is, you're, you're just going slow and steady for no reason. Well, and when you're talking about relationships, it's not only the changes within you also very good point realizing that your partner whether you're the submissive partner looking at the head of household or your head of household looking at your submissive partner your partner is autonomous and has a certain level of responsibility in the relationship to drive that growth and so you can want it for them so much But until they are willing and ready and able to make those changes and facilitate that growth within themselves, you have to be patient. Because until they're ready to make those changes on their own, you can, as the head of household, if you're looking at your submissive partner, you can offer all of the accountability, all of the consistency, all of the um, discipline that they're asking for and until they decide okay now I'm ready to actually move move forward and change then you're not going to get the results and it can be very tempting to be frustrated by that it can be very tempting to think that the relationship's not working um but it's also just important to remember and to understand that growth is a process, change is a process, and it takes time. And I have found that taking moments, whether that's every six months, three months, every month, just taking those moments to look back and reflect where were we a month ago in our relationship? What are some of the things that we have implemented to facilitate growth? And are we seeing any growth right now? Do I want to get to a point in our relationship where I never get frustrated? I can just follow Coda's direction and follow his lead 100% of the time. And I can, you know, never express frustration. I can uh, trust him to lead Uh, in all situations and not be bothered by certain things because, you know, he's handling it, that would be ideal. But that is a process that takes time and it takes experience and it takes consistent accountability in order to learn how to allow myself to have that response rather than the hard ingrained response that I have now. Well, and to be fair to you though, too, 
she has been very, speaking of patience, Arya has been very patient as I learned and continue to learn what it means to lead, that it's okay to lead in the ways that she is encouraging me to lead, that it is not abuse, that it is not authoritarian. It's none of those things unless I cross a certain line, but we've talked about where that line is. And so then it's being comfortable with saying, this is, this is okay. She's asking for that. So it is okay for me to lead, to do these things, to say these things, to follow through with these things. And I know that at times it was probably, a, it has been, and maybe still is a little bit, a very painful process for you because I'm not 100% there yet. I think I'm making some, especially lately, I've made some bigger strides than I have in the past. But that's why I said earlier about change being difficult, change being hard, um, and because that patience is hard. But again, it, it, to her credit, we, from from where we are now to when we first started, she's been very patient. And we've talked about on the podcast before where um, not the patience waned, but we had some valleys in there that there were times where we thought about this just isn't working. We're just going to throw in the towel. I have seen within the domestic discipline advice information out there as well as just ad- relationship advice in general that tends to lean more into traditional roles. Um, there seems to be an unbalanced approach to who is responsible for um change and growth within a relationship you know I have noticed that resources that are geared towards men put an unnatural responsibility onto the men to lead and drive growth and change in their relationships I have seen uh, resources that are geared towards women to say that to, that put an unnatural uh, responsibility onto women to be you know, submissive and demure in order to drive change within their relationship. And I think that the truth is somewhere in between. Yes, as a head of household, it is your responsibility to lead, to be strong in your convictions, to drive change and growth because you're the decision maker. And as a submissive partner, it is your responsibility to submit and allow your head of household to lead and allow them to make those decisions and to follow and to be obedient, you know, honor their their position. But one person can't do it by themselves in a relationship. You have to have a balance between those two. You have to have two people who are willing to step into their roles and to um, take the responsibility that they do hold and show up in the relationship to be able to drive those changes. But that's exactly where you have to be very, very careful, even entering domestic discipline, is making sure that your partner is willing to to go on this journey with you and they realize that both are going to have to be patient, both are going to have to change. Um, and, and that's the beauty of what I think a domestic discipline relationship is, is that you grow and you change together. And it's work. Both people really? have to... Really? Is it work? <laughs> yes, it is work. <laughs> both people have to really be willing to put in the work and put in the effort because... I think that too many times we've seen not only people entering in domestic discipline, but also just people going from, you know, dating and to living together and to being engaged and to being married. And they don't really realize that there is a lot of, you know, change that happens as that relationship progresses. And it requires different levels of effort and work at each stage and with domestic discipline that just adds another layer into it where you know as a head of household you have to be willing to put in the effort to be consistent to um 
you know, offer accountability, to check in, to not micromanage unless that's your style. I mean, every everybody has different preferences. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Hopefully you wouldn't <laughs> describe my style as micromanaging. <laughs> but Coda is very, very um, aware not to micromanage. It's not the style he wants to portray. It's not necessarily something that I would find beneficial. Because I don't like to be micromanaged myself, so I don't want to be a micromanager for her or anyone else. But he still has to be willing to um, at least daily check in and see, okay, are there any, you know, have you done your duties for the day? Have you accomplished the things that you're supposed to accomplish? And if not, what needs to happen uh, because of that? And he also needs to be willing and able to call me out for the behavioral aspects of what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, I think what can be mistaken is that some people think that uh, not micromanaging means completely hands off. So you got to be careful um, to not go too far the other way, which I've done before. <laughs> Absolutely. Done before. Because you didn't want to micromanage, you're like, oh, well, she'll let me know. And it's like, well, that's not really. No, yeah, I went too far the other direction. So I've had to learn, again, that balance i've had and and i've had to be patient with myself even to say okay it's going to take you time to learn the balance of not going all the way over to micromanaging but also not so far over here where you're just hands off and thinks that she can just totally manage herself because that's the whole reason she's asking you to hold her accountable for these things there is a spectrum of leadership styles correct right exactly and again there might be i i think the amount of couples that fall into being able to be successful with either complete micromanagement or on the other side of the spectrum, completely hands off. I feel like those, the couples that would be successful with either of those systems is very low. I think the vast majority of couples fall somewhere in the middle of that spectrum. And you have to find what works for the people in your relationship. Well said. Well said. I don't think I have anything to add on that one. But that's where, um, in all of this, that's where the patience comes in. Um, because as you're trying to figure this out and you're trying to figure out where you are on the spectrum, that takes time, that takes patience, no matter who you are, if you're the head of household or you're the submissive partner. I rabbit hold because I was in the middle of a, a thought I just realized. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. But all that to say, so the head of household has to have put in the effort to figure out where their leadership lies and, and the style of leadership they're bringing to the table. The submissive partner also needs to realize that they have to put in the effort to um, not only fulfill the duties that they've agreed to, and but they also have to put in the effort to try to change their behavior. And again, that takes time, um, especially when you have years of... Um, knee-jerk reactions that you're trying to you know change because I don't think it's a good look for a submissive partner to get snippy or yell or argumentative um and I, I think most heads of households would uh agree with me on that one yeah and at the <laughs> same time I don't think it's good for a head of household necessarily to do that either no, but just to, just as a, an example, you know, so if you have years of, you know, at the first sign of stress or being challenged on something, you become snippy or snarky or, you know, you get defensive and you get argumentative, it's going to take a while and it's going to take considerable effort to change that behavior and it might take a bit of discipline along the way. Um and so you have to be willing to show up and do your part to make those changes. And again, it's it's like training for a marathon. I would not wake up tomorrow and decide, I think I'm going to run a marathon today. Um, there is a process of training your body in order to be able to go through that. And I think that the same applies to... Behavioral so changes. the reason I'm laughing is she's not a runner at all. So if she were to wake up, I'd go, are you okay? <laughs> but very good analogy, though. That was very good. You did the sports analogy this time. It wasn't me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't have anything other to uh, anything else to add because I feel like you capped it off really well other than remember 
that this is speaking of the marathon. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and that's with everything in life, but especially your relationship. And the one, the couples that I have talked to over the years who have been married 40, 50, 60, some of them have made it to the mark of 70 years. They've all said it's patience and willingness to go through that change with your partner together, not alone. And I think that there is something to be said about understanding who your partner is and not accepting poor behavior, but accepting who they are for their personality and for their uniqueness and not trying to change them into the, again, going back to perfectionism, into the perfect uh, partner, into the perfect head of household or the perfect submissive partner. Um, Look at who they are and try to decide what does them fulfilling their potential and their best look like and that's what you strive towards excellent I, again i don't have anything to add i don't <laughs> i don't want to just beat a dead horse and say exactly what you just said so excellent anyway guys i think we're gonna call it um because i i feel like if i tried to add anything at this point we'll just be talking in circles and <laughs> I definitely don't want to just reiterate the same point for 10 more minutes for the sake of time. (laughs) Um, If you want to get bonus content as well as the podcast in the video form and um, our, the link to our Patreon is down below and that will give you access to the discord community um, at that $5 tier. So I think, Move on to the post show for the patrons. Yeah. If you like this conversation, please consider giving this video a like, subscribe if you not aren't already, and we will see you in the next one. See you later. Bye. <laughs>